from calculations on the data to making some inferences. That's the scope if we are looking at. Here, I'm making a statement, right? Any statement. So here, uh, in this chapter, the focus is on statements relating to averages are typically means and statements relating to standard deviations. These are the two kinds of statements we will test here, right? Like that you can, as a statistician, we'll make statements regarding uh, the, the uh, relationships between the two variables, statements relating to regression, statements relate everything. Every calculation we do, there is a statistical testing part. Right, we have done the calculations regarding the means, uh, standard deviations and all. So there is a statistical testing part. What does the statistical testing part tell you? From the sample, can I interpret it to a population? Whatever the statement that you have made, you will not make it on a sample. You will make it on a population. But using the sample, can I test that? And if I test that, can I accept that statement or should I reject that statement? That's a typical frame of hypothesis testing. So as a part of this chapter, our focus is on testing for the averages or the means of the data and testing for the standard deviations in the data. Only these two kinds of calculations, but literally every calculation is exposed to a statistical test. Whatever we have done in the statistics chapter, all calculations, whatever we have done, literally they all get exposed to a statistical test. But as far as this chapter scope is concerned, we are looking at only the tests relating to the means and the standard deviations itself. Now, what do we mean by hypothesis testing? As I just now said, we make one statement. That statement, we call it as hypothesis. Right? We make, someone makes some statement. That statement is called as a hypothesis. And in that hypothesis, we have two types. One is called as the null. The other is called as an alternate. What is the difference here? Any statement we are making, for example, the height of an Indian male is more than 175 centimeters. The average height of an Indian male is more than 175 centimeters. So, what do I have? How am I writing it? Height greater than 175. This is what is the way I can write it. Average height greater than 175. Based on your statement, I am writing it like this. Now, what this hypothesis testing world talks of is, from that statement, you create two statements. One is called as a null hypothesis. One is called as an alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis should always contain equal to in it. Within the statement, the null hypothesis should always contain equal to either in isolation or like this greater than or equal to less than or equal to these are all null hypothesis statements right in any whatever the statement you are making when i am taking it into creation of the hypothesis to either uh, te to test that statement the way I take it is, one statement, I will break it into two statements. You are making a statement, the height of a, average height of an Indian male is greater than 175 centimeters. But when I am taking it as a statistician, I will create two statements out of it. One will contain equality, the other will not contain equality. Now, I have to test this I have to, I am more interested, one of the statements which is made is this. What is the opposite of this? 
less than or equal to I can say the perfect opposite to it perfect opposite to it is less than or equal to when you make when you are making a statement greater than 175 I mean if I look at the whole space if it is not greater than 175 then it could be either less than or equal to 175 so this two put together is all possibilities right so what I will do is because equality should be there in the null this statement I will call it as my null hypothesis this statement I will call it as my alternate hypothesis the null hypothesis in this case is the average height of an Indian male is less than or equal to 175 centimeter the average height of an Indian male is greater than 175 becomes my alternate hypothesis straightforward any statement you make the most of the statements which we are making are will have that kind of equality greater than less than kind of statements itself and as far as the scope is concerned we are talking of those kind of statements only so probably it is saying the average returns of Infosys is is greater than or equal to the average returns of Wipro so what is the statement here Infosys greater than or equal to Wipro what is the opposite side to this Infosys less than Wipro the perfect opposite is what we have to take so which means I can take greater than or equal to as a part of my null hypothesis less than as a part of alternate hypothesis so any statement someone is making the first step for me in the part of hypothesis testing is create a null hypothesis as well as alternate hypothesis the simple way to create null and hypothesis null and alternate is like this the equality should be there as a part of the null or if someone is saying uh, the average returns of Infosys is equal to 1%. Average daily returns of Infosys is equal to 1%. Which means it is there is an equal. What is the exact opposite to that? Not equal. It could be less than, it could be greater than. Right? So typically we talk about three pairs. If the null is equal, the alternate will be not equal. If the null is greater than or equal, the alternate will be less than. If the null is less than or equal, the alternate will be greater than. These three combinations will get created for us as a part of any hypothesis testing we do in life. Right? As far as the means and the standard deviations are concerned, any hypothesis testing we do, we talk about only these three kind of relationships equal to greater than or equal to less than or equal to kind of stuff and to make things even more simpler if i am talking of equal to the alternate is not equal to right which could be less than greater than i am talking about on both the sides of my data so Whenever my null is equal to, the test which we will perform, we will call it as a two-tailed test. We will discuss a bit more about it slightly later. But simplicity, now that we are in this context, I am looking at testing on both the tails, lesser than as well as greater than. Both of them are important for me. So, that is where we call it as two-tailed test. Whereas the other two, we call them as one tail test because we only look at one side if the null is greater than or equal to i'm i'm more bothered only uh, my alternate is only one side less than is the only thing which is in my alternate similarly here greater than is the only thing so there is only one side that i have to test for whereas uh, if it is equal to i may have to test out both for less than or greater than both of them so that's where we call it as two-tailed test for equal to and not equal to pair and for the other two we call them as one-tailed test. We will again discuss more about it slightly later but 
that is one aspect so first thing is i need to know what is my null hypothesis alternate hypothesis i need to know what is whether i am doing a two tail test or a one tail test then apply the state the appropriate test statistic and the probability so probability distribution is it a normal distribution is it a t distribution you have to state what distribution it is following especially if your data is large sample size is large you can go with a normal distribution sample size less than 30 but still normal you can go for a t distribution we have discussed so i mean there are so many other variants but our scope is only up to this right there are uh, there are 30 30 40 kind of distributions that are there in the space but our scope is more to normal and t as of now Right, as far as averages is concerned, our scope is to these two distributions. And we have seen both of them are more or less the same. So we have to specify, first of all, whether we have to use a normal distribution or a T distribution in this case. We know, depending on the sample size and all, we can say whether we are going for Z or T. And test statistic is nothing but a formula. For every testing, there is a formula associated that formula is what we are calling as a test statistic if you remember in our mean we use the saying mean mine i mean the sample value minus the mean by standard deviation we said right that is a test statistic for the means itself each value subtract the mean from it and divide by the standard deviation so it's like think of it like a formula Right? For each test, there is a separate formula. For a means, we have two, three types of means in our examples. For means, there is a separate test. For standard deviations and variances, there is a separate test. Test statistic is just nothing but a formula associated with it. So, you have to select the appropriate test statistic and also the probability distribution, whether it is a normal or a T or whatever it is. And then the significance level. We have already discussed the significance level, which is 1 minus the confidence level. 5%, 1%. 5% significance level is 95% confidence level. 1% significance level is 99% confidence level. So I have to talk about what is my significance level. And the decision rule. If it lies within my 95% confidence interval, I'll accept it. If it lies, just like as I said, 95% confidence interval is 160 to 175. If your statement value is 180, lying outside my 95% confidence interval, I will reject your statement. Otherwise, I will not reject your statement. Right? That is what is my decision rule. I'll reject a statement if it doesn't lie within my 95% or 99% confidence interval. If it lies within my 95 or 99 percent confidence interval, I will not reject that statement. I will take that statement. That is what we are calling as a decision rule. Now, once I have defined all that, collect the sample data and compute.